This is the House of Parliament where men and women have sat for decades making decisions that would affect all our lives. Do they really work in the interests of the people or themselves? They sit at the wrong tables trying to decipher which way to turn. Is it left or is it right? Have the people benefited from those decisions? Our people have suffered for far too long. Change should not be a figment of the imagination, but reality. Every boy, every girl, every man, every woman are equally important. The market vendor joyfully sells her produce. The fish vendor skillfully uses his cutlass to cut the fish. Keep on working. Let your smile be your motivation. Build a community of brotherly and sisterly love. Don't give up on your dreams. Surround yourself with positive thinkers. Think big and keep on moving. Keep pushing the envelope. Yes, push that envelope until you have succeeded. You may have made many mistakes. But that is no reason to stop. Don't you dare give up. Get ready for that overflow. Get ready for that breakthrough. The overflow is coming. Showers of blessings. Stay cool. Stay calm. Stay collective. Ride the rough waves of life. Hold on to that rope tightly. Just keep working. Keep moving. Keep believing self-motivation. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Lies and Deceit. How are you this evening? I am your host, Soraya Alexander, better known as Soso. It is a pleasure being here with you tonight because there are so many things we have to speak about and touch base tonight. So, 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 so many things. My people, you know, why is it that St. Lucian's why is it that we accept any and everything? My people, if we are to progress, we have to make allowances for us to think, right? Thank you. Someone just bought me a coffee. I'll read the message in a bit. We have to make the allowances for us to think. Um... It is really, it is really sad, you know, coming here, talking to you every time. As I said, I'm not doing this of my own. My heavenly father has put me up to a task. And when he sees necessary for me to stop, I will stop because I need the Holy Spirit to guide me to do this. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't. And, you know, some of my supporters, y'all are just, I don't know how to describe some of you. The strength you give me. One of my supporters, I went to school with this supporter of mine. And um, there was this pastor who was praying and preaching that, you know, anything that is sent towards you or for you or your family, it's going to come to nothing. And he was praying or whatever. And I was blessed. My darling, thanks for sending me this live video because I, was, I placed it on my table and I was doing stuff in my kitchen and I was listening to it. It really gave me a lot of strength. And, um, you know, everybody's saying so-so is Iron Lady, but there are those who are very mindful that I am flesh and blood and I always need a fresh anointing. Um, so that I can carry on. And thank you for that, sweetheart. Thank you so much, she. I appreciate that, she. I hope you are under the live. I don't know what you're doing tonight, but I hope you're under the live, she. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And this is what I need, the, your support. And um, 
our country is in a sad state and you know why i feel sad i feel sad is because people who should know better the professionals that should know better they have sat by idly and doing nothing about the situation in our country because at the end of the day when we don't do what is right you know what is happening you know what is gonna happen it's going to be our children our children children it's gonna be a mess and i have been preaching about grooming the younger generation but who is going to groom the younger generation when all those hardbacks are set in their ways they are set in their ways it must be them some of them want to be on their dying bed and still in a big position making money and then we wonder why our young people don't listen to us adults we wonder why the young people just take themselves and say you see me i'm gonna leave this country and they bloody right to leave it because we have let me tell you something parents you know encourage your children not to go into law let me tell you why the legal field in saint lucia is saturated and we have many broke lawyers so let me tell you when they party in power they happy encourage your children to go into science and technology encourage your children to go that route encourage your children to become tradesmen tradeswomen vocational people encourage your children to think to work for themselves be creative because we have a set of hungry hard backs professionals that can only survive when their party is in power and they sit by and say nothing the things that is happening in this country is heartbreaking the things that is happening in this country is heartbreaking and i know a lot of people let me tell you i get a lot of messages from people people calling me and saying thank you so so because nobody is speaking on our behalf it's it's a lot oh yes the enemy will come in but when the enemy comes after me my heavenly father is going to raise a standard against them so when you come listening to Soso and Soso is saying to you support her with the coffees and you don't want to do it you know it's left to you it's left to you but I have some faithful people who support continuously now many people have been saying on the live or they message me and they're saying they do not how to know how to buy coffee it takes you less than five seconds to buy coffee right the link is pinned at the bottom of the life all right you click on it if you want to support you press support if you want to be a member you press membership it is easy like squeezy all right and what i will do because as i said i don't have ads and i'm not gonna take ads because people would want you to sing the narrative let me give a shout out to vitus peter you know he is really a how will i say it a wonderful individual a wonderful young man god bless you your wife your family wonderful person we air on his station every wednesday at 8 30 p.m and his channel is gvd tv flow 115. now let me tell the flobo something i know y'all some of y'all stingy, but the labor's coming in secret and they support him. Y'all don't like me to tell the truth, but that is what I there for. Let me tell you all something, my people. You remember when Richard Frederick had his show, Can I Not Travel? You see how the whole of St. Lucia, all the labor's rallied around him, supporting him? Why you think they won? Because all of them went supporting him. But y'all have a powerhouse like so so coming in and instead y'all spread the wood and buy the coffee y'all don't do it and i can tell y'all y'all will never like me because i am frank whether it's labor or uwp 
the 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 papa and mama slps right now come in and they're going on my on my site buy me a coffee and they buy the coffee your family so let me tell you if you want a revolution you have to be part of it that's what they did they had revolution they beat pan and now they're crying for a good job who want a job for 2500 dollars right and beating pan, pan left right and center but i am not like that i'm not here speaking so when my friend shas wins for me to get a job with shas i want no job with shas i know everybody trying to pull me hey come in no 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 so so is going to be true to her mission i am there to advise to help but i like to be independent right what i am doing i like to be independent and for people not to tell me oh go on seeing that narrative because at the end of the day when i speak the truth uwp will do better but slp not doing better tonight i come in to dish you with them so you need to go and buy the coffee so what we're gonna do a little housekeeping what we're gonna do because sometimes i speak a lot and i don't take a little time to drink some water and really clear my throat so what we have planned to do my producer and my good friend Jason, Jason Lionel, where are you? That's my twin, you know. And Jason said, um, you know, he always speaks to me. Nice guy, gives me advice. And he's also, you know, um, play the video so they can know how to buy the coffee, take a break. You know, he born same day and month with me. So you see, Leo's, we on the ball. Always have my back, always checking for me. Thank you, Jason. You may not see Jason commenting a lot, but that's my little friend, you know. And I like people like Jason. And let me tell you, and he said to me, so, so maybe that's why you and I are like that. Because I used to see him commenting, as I've said before. And his commenting was almost like mine. It doesn't matter who is in power. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. So what I will do now, right, what I would be doing now, because tonight we're going down hot, I'm going to play the video for you to understand how to buy a coffee. So... Take a look, thank you. Hello everyone. Today we'll be learning how to show your support for Soraya Alexander through memberships and coffees. Okay, so first up guys, you need to keep this link in mind, buymeacoffee.com slash Soraya Alexander. So let's go on and head on to the site. So of course you are greeted with Miss Alexander Buy Me A Coffee page. You'll scroll down to the bottom where you'll see support or membership. So of course the support option is to purchase your coffee. So we don't want to purchase one, three or five. We want to purchase a custom amount. So we'll put it right here and select 10. So of course for you guys who like to be anonymous, the name and say something nice option is optional to you. So if you'd like to do that, you can or do as you please. But in this case, I'm going to be entering a name. And I'm going to be saying something nice. I'm going to say, love your show. Keep it coming. All right. And also, we know some of you have messages that you don't intend for everyone to see. So you can simply select the option, make this message private. So we're going to go ahead and press the support button. On the support page, you are greeted with the email and card number so of course you go ahead we're going to put john doe at hotmail.com and in this case we're going to be using a dummy card number but in your case you will enter your real valid card number so of course you put your month your year and the cvc of your card and of course you will select the i'm not a robot option for verification so this is simply how you go ahead and purchase your coffee. Simple. So now guys, we're going to go ahead and get a membership. So as you could see, we have different levels of membership. So you can choose what you like, whichever one you prefer. You go ahead and select that. So you just press the join button and then you're greeted whether you want to take that membership per month or per year. So we're going to go ahead and start filling in our details. We're going to put our email, John Doe at hotmail.com and in this case your name is required so and your email so we're going to go ahead and put a name we're going to put um john doe 
and we are going to see something nice we're going to see love your show now like before as we saw guys you have the option to make this message private so you could just go right here tick and that message is private so of course you press the join and then you go ahead and you get into your card and so on and so on and of course you verify that you are not a robot now on this page you also have the option because i know some of you guys may want to take more than the allotted membership so you can simply use the free option predefined options for you and add it 5 10 15 whatever as you wish okay so guys this is actually the full tutorial this is how you go ahead and purchase your coffee this is how you go ahead and purchase your membership so i want to say thank you guys thanks for watching hope this video was as informative as it could be this was a key minus see ya So yes, my people, this is the way you buy coffee, okay? And um, let me read, uh, I need to sign in um, to this. So you'll have to sign in for me to read. Okay, just give me a minute. My producer is going to sign me in onto my iPad. But my people, um, the hypocrisy of the St. Lucia Labour Party. I do not understand them, you know. All white people who have business in St. Lucia should pack up their bags and go. All people who are white, who have a little tea, cool air, YII, should pack up their bags and leave St. Lucia. The hypocrisy, a good man. And I always say, I do not care with your complexion. I look at your heart. I look at your heart to see how you relate to people. We had a tea non blanc named Alan Michael Chastney. But then again, Alan Chastney was a newbie. Alan Chastney could not have played the politics to be nasty like the St. Lucia Labour Party when they were in opposition. Alan came in as if it was his business. And we, we beat up Alan for saying that, but Alan was very correct in saying, we need to run this bloody country as a business. Because look at them now. Look at Philip J.P. All he is saying, <coughs> excuse me, all he is saying is that revenue, revenue, we, we shout on revenue, eh? revenue, uh, shot falling, revenue. We, we, we need revenue. Revenue. <laughs> we want our country and our lives to return to normal. God have mercy upon us. <laughs> People, I do not want to laugh, but I have, I have to laugh. Because you cannot tell me that you didn't want the white folks, but today you posing. Today you are posing and bontier people. Alan Chastney, you see how tall and handsome and good looking Prime Minister we had. When Alan Chastney dressed, you see why I put Alan Chastney. Thank you, darling. You see why I put Alan Chastney in my video to see this tall, slender man coming out of his official vehicle to go and shake their hands. This is what you call stutter. This is what you call a man that understands the mission. You have put that thing, um, please put that picture up for my viewers to see. We have this man. Taking out a picture with the white people, the white people telling Lucians don't vote for the white man, the white man this. I want you to tell me, if we don't want the white man, why are you standing up with the prince, right, and the duchess? Why are you standing up with them? You should have said to them, do not come to St. Lucia because your word should be your bond. Your word should be your truth. You should have said to them not to come, please, not to come to St. Lucia. But this prime minister doesn't understand the mission. 
This prime minister doesn't understand the call. Look at how this man is standing. Look at his hands in his pocket. My God, where are the protocol officers? I, I believe, honestly, people, this is my honest belief, and this is how I, I, I see it. They are actually... Hi, my YouTubers, Cynthia, Twin, Piton, Allison. Uh, good bit of y'all there. Love y'all, love y'all. Where's my Troy? I haven't seen Troy. I love y'all, love y'all. Maybe Troy out partying tonight, but I love y'all. And... Where are the protocol officers? My gut feeling is they are setting up this gentleman to fail. It is very, very, very sad, but my gut feeling is they are setting up this man to fail. Because help me understand my people. Look at how Philip J.P. is standing. Hands in pocket. The man behaving like, you know, he's going and check a girl down the road. His hands in his pocket right somebody said he is standing like he in masha waiting for a bus margaret thanks for the coffee it's greatly appreciated so everybody saw the video you saw how to do it go ahead you know buy the coffee and you are very you're very light right margaret his hand is in his pocket like he is standing waiting to catch a bus by masha or he waiting for a horse to run to bring him down to view for to go and run the track the sh track what is this we are the laughing so when you are in a position so critical and so important as that you have to ensure that you can play the role correctly exactly Mirinda. this is very unprofessional what is this look at look at the the, the um the the prince they know the royal protocol they know how they're supposed to wave Etiquette what they're supposed to do. Look at the ladies' dress is very long because their dresses can't really be too short. And if it's very light, they have to put little weights at the bottom of the dress of the skirt all around so it doesn't fly and you don't see their undies. So there is protocol in everything. Look at your prime minister for me, please. Look at your prime minister for me. And I will tell you all something, my people. People will say, <laughs> Curtis, behave yourself. People will say that I am being hard on this prime minister. I have to. Let me tell you why. I don't like liars. I don't like liars. And the way I view this government, they are a bunch of liars. They lie, they lie, they lie, they lie, they lie a lot. Now, for me, in the picture, it was for the shoes for me. If you get the joke, you get the joke. If you get it, there, my business is the shoes for me. Now, my people, let's get down to business. But first, let me just call up some people. Let's get down to business. Margaret, thanks for the coffee, darling. Someone bought me many coffee, said, continue doing the good work. Anonymous from Tampa, Florida, you need to make me know who you are. You know, you can send me a private message. Keep up the good work, the person said. Someone bought me a coffee and the person said, my darling queen, continue to provide us with information and I will continue to support with coffee. Greatly appreciated. And um, Anal bought coffees and the coffee is from Andre Kanai. Andre, thank you for the many coffees. Thank you. Mama, <laughs> I don't see all those coffees. Someone bought me Mizzy coffee. I, the person, please tell me who you all are because I can't really see again. And somebody bought me coffees, many coffees, and the person said, keep up, um, job well done. And um, I think, yes, for the last show, Melly bought me um, coffees, and she said, enjoying the show, continue to keep St. Lucian's informed. Emma did, thank you, Ems. Someone else bought Kali. Thanks, Kali, for the coffees. And um, thank you very much. And, and y'all are getting it, right? It is what I'm doing there. It's taking a lot out of me. It's it's Saturday night. I am single. You you you, you know. I I need to get my my boys. I need to get my husband. I'm single and I'm here with y'all. So appreciate so so. Anyway, people, let's get back. Just playing y'all. Just playing y'all. Cause y'all know I love y'all. Let's get down to business, people. Let me get my list of what I have to show y'all, my sweet people. Okay. Let me get down to business. My people, 
this is how I feel. Alan Shastner should not come back as no political leader. He shouldn't come back as prime minister. He shouldn't come back by nothing. Because when he come back, that mess that is going to be there for the man to fix, God alone that can help him. Alan Shastner was promising we the people of St. Lucia where there are those who would have their own medical insurance, so, you know, they would not fall into that category. But for the majority of St. Lucians, he was promising them $75,000 in insurance, but what they did, they kicked him plat down, plat And the lies and the deceit that is being played out by this government is unbelievable. Take a listen to something Richard Fred. I was imagining I was passing, I was very busy yesterday. I was passing by CCC and I and I was like, what I'm hearing there? Listen for yourself, my people. We had this dispensation, this government dispensation had initiated medical insurance. That never existed here. Cast City Council was founded in 1967. 1967, 55 years ago, and never before were the workers covered by medical insurance. And it is because this government cares, it is because we want to ensure that if persons get injured on the job, that the financial deficiencies will not prevent them from getting the best treatment. And so we introduce medical insurance for all workers. Or listen carefully to what this man said you know you all need to think critically and this is what I am here to do you cannot tell me that this man is so brave and boastful to be on a mic saying from 1967 the CCC never had medical insurance but partner partner once you part of a previous government, what did you do? You didn't put it. You, king, and all the rest didn't see it. This is why I say Alan Shastney should not come back. He should let all of y'all suffer. Because Alan Shastney only held such a high position as prime minister from 2016. And his role or his goal was that every St. Lucian get medical insurance. But here is this man with his foolishness. Now, I am going to show you a letter that was sent to one of the security officers. What reaching me is that they were informed that a new company would have taken over and what would have happened, they would have just been, you know, rehired into the company and not let go. So we have about seven of those security guards who are unemployed and these security guards right now are jobless when you take out food from people's mouth what do you expect is going to happen crime and i need you all to explain to me richard frederick and the gang the council i need you all to explain to me who is now taking over I, some, I think it's some Harlan security. Now everybody's saying they want to know who is Harlan security. Now this is why I said it is not left for me alone. I am doing so much already. You think I have time to go in companies of register and ask to see who own, because that's public information, who own that. Some of, one of you all get up and go. Somebody from UWP. UWP, you don't need to get active. So much bacchanal and row -ro has happened for, for over the weeks, over a month. You all ain't saying nothing. Even if Shas not there, you all die. So you see why I tell you all, if Shas ne, is not the political leader of, of UWP, Balfini, because he is not there. He just came in, right? And and it's like, as Shas come, you see things going again. You meet, where's the chairman? Where's the deputy? Where Fortuna? Where um, was the other one named Andy? Where are the people? You're supposed to be fighting the cause of the people. This have nothing to do, oh, we lost the elections. And then next thing, Labour saying, or the government saying, oh, we are wajé. We just want to talk be because we lost. No, you are speaking for humanity. You are speaking. 
speaking for the people of St. Lucia that doesn't have a voice. Whether they voted for you or not, you still have to speak. It's wrong is wrong, right is wrong. Where are y'all? Zot laka domi. Let me show y'all the, the, the letter. But, uh, so the letter, my people, this is the letter that was given, right? This is the letter that was given to one of the security guards, right? Now, you all need to talk. Now, I will not, I will be honest with you all, I am already investing my time, my money, my intellectual resources to come here and spread the word and you're spreading it around do not expect soraya to go and stand up by parliament on tuesday for you you are the ones affected get up your asses the seven of y'all get up your asses put your placard put you don't have to put red yellow shirt put a white shirt a blue no don't put blue a blue whale permit it's a yes, yes, yes. put a pink shirt because powerful men wear pink put your pink shirt and go and stand up in front of parliament house you have to create a statement you cannot just say oh uwp will do it for me or so so or feral prudent or champagne you are affected get up your ass and go and stand up with your placard and say i want my job back go and stand with your placard in front of parliament because all the bahows and the snakes and the liars and the deceivers will be there Y'all St. Lucians behave like y'all afraid of your skin. And it's people like Feral and So So and Champagne. Y'all want us to put our necks on the line. We're giving enough. We're giving a lot. You two have to do something for your own self. You can't expect us to do everything. We are already dropping the fire. We need the support in numbers. We need the support in numbers. They're not supposed to see every time it's feral face or so so face or champagne face. Where are y'all? It is your country. Stand up for yourself. And I make I know I'm mincing my words tonight because some of y'all need to hear that Lucian's behaving like they're afraid. Anyway, I, I am friends, so I, I dread. Not me, you doing magic. Trust me. You know, see when Richard came for me, I bury I bury him in, I bury him on my life. I don't have time for these fellas. Dear Mr. Henry. Please be advised that your work agreement with the Castries Constituency Council has come to an end, effective Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. Um, people, today is only the 23rd. Lord, um, we do not even have a labor department. Koshani we have in St. Lucia. Koshani. This is why I tell you all, I can... Take out my tongue and talk. If y'all who are affected don't get up and start doing things, quapo smoke y'all bite. So they're telling the man, at this time, you will cease to report for duty. Now, this is not... Uh, where are the professionals? Because if I get it, obviously y'all must have gotten... Where are the prof professionals in HR? Where is the labor department? Where are the voices? Lord, I tell you, this country is sickening. So all outstanding payments will be made to you within seven days at seven days of your period of engagement with the council. We at the council want to take this time to thank you and will wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And signed by some Melissa Matre, human resource supervisor. Which HR person writing this garbage? This is this is this is this this is madness. Somebody is told not to report to work. Effective Tuesday, tenth, twenty. To an end effect council has come to an end effective tuesday 10 2020 at this time you will cease to report for duty so they are telling him tuesday may 10th is that two weeks so they're giving him two weeks notice and they're telling him all outstanding payments will be made to you within seven days at your period of what who, who writes a letter like that who writes that Right, what, what kind of, you, you know, it's not 
telling him. It's not telling him anything. This is such a rubbish letter. This is such a vague letter. Where is, who is the human resource? It's a supervisor. Is there a, what, I, I don't know what to say. How can you give somebody a letter like this? This is, this is, this is, this is, this is madness. This is insanity. And this, let me tell you something, people. I saw a video. People sent it to me. And um, I saw it on Facebook. And the leading reaction was laughing. I didn't laugh. I didn't react to the video. It was this guy. Apparently, he went to work. He said where he worked. And then while he was at work, something was telling him, go home, something is wrong. When he went home, he was relating the story to another guy. But you see, y'all St. Lucians, that's why I will grow to my grave with anything that is troubling me. I will go and talk to the fan. I'll talk to my fridge. I will talk to my stove. I will talk to the lamp in my house. I will never tell y'all anything that is bothering me. You mean to tell me, and he, this guy was hurting. This guy was relating to another young man that he went home and he caught his, 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 his significant other in bed with another man. And that was hurting him so much. He even said that when he saw that, he just closed the door quietly and then he was walking out, right? And all he wanted to do is go and fall into the ocean to kill himself. Then he said, oh, he felt like just going and kill both of them. And then he said no. And then he was relating his pain to another human being. And this guy videotaping it had nothing better to do but to put it on Facebook. Men do hurt, men do cry. Instead of you being there for a brother, you're posting that. I am saying all this to say this. This is a man. This is a man, right? Uh, Mr. Henry is a man. You're giving the gentleman a letter like this. Unawares of no warning, and I understood Mr. Henry and the rest have been there for seven years. No warning, no nothing, and you're telling him as of May 10th, bye-bye. You know, after, let me tell you, you've got to be mentally strong to live in St. Lucia under these circumstances. This gentleman could have gone and commit suicide. He could have gone and kill people, do crazy things. Because you are taking bread away from a man. He has no warnings. He has nothing. And you're telling him, go home. And then you bring in a new security um, company. These are the men, the seven men, who knew how to secure the market. Why not incorporate them within that security company? Based on what I understood, they were supposed to be incorporated in the company. But you send them home. Said Lucian, I pray every day that God bless me, so that I can take care of myself and my family, because I didn't put labor there. But a lot of y'all are crying, because y'all listen to the lies and deceit. And the lies and deceit is being played bold face in y'all faces. And y'all still not protesting? Think about it. You're giving somebody, this is a rubbish letter, you don't do that. In the first instant, you know, you said you were a government that cared about people. You were a government that loved people and, and they're just going home. So St. Lucians, you have to come to the realization, <coughs> excuse me, that you have to stand for yourself. Don't expect only us to stand for you. You have to stand for yourself also. This is just pure madness. Yes. I believe some of them have to cry. I was one saying, don't let them cry. I believe some of y'all have to cry. Because we removed, Pamwe, y'all removed a good man. And, he, and he's still a good man. And I admire Shastney how, how composed he is. Because maybe God knew why he put Shastney in this at that time. Because let me tell you, the grace he has, a lot of us would not have it. Now my people, 
we have a lot to discuss let's go let me show you i i i finish with him and then i'm going to i am going to Ernest. i want to show you a video well with the pictures i'm going to show you the houses and this is when i come here to speak to you i'm not speaking to you as like an ass i'm speaking to you because i have researched it and remember when I said to you what they propose to build in Castries South is this pure madness? Condos who have <laughs> who have money to buy condos? Which gas station attendant have money to buy condos? Not even the bank tellers can buy condos. You talking about condos? I want to show you what Gaston Brown has proposed for low income owners homes for them and this is what i was talking about i didn't even know gaston was doing that i am telling you the the brains that's supposed to be behind the wheels to run this country they're not it's a set of foolish men take a look on the nonsense five-story condo she knows what she is talking about because look at what Gaston Brown has proposed for his people and this is why I kept saying have this government done a needs assessment as to what people want this is beautiful and most St. Lucians, we are not from the northern world. We're not north, from North America. We are Caribbean people. And I know how St. Lucians think as I am a St. Lucian. People like to have their own house, whether it is one bedroom. They have their little balcony. They have their yard. They can go out and walk. They have their little dog, their little cat, whatever they have, right? They plant a little green fig at the bank, a little planting, and they have their own little space. I know my people. This is what the people want. Not the nonsense this man is proposing, a five-story condo. We, we, we don't want condo. I thought y'all say, girl bought condo, y'all give her leaks. Say how much things on the lady, and now you bring condo to people. Right? My reps say all, in, um, all, all investment is good, but I know my rep coming for y'all. But this is foolishness y'all are doing, right? Look at what he did and just look at the house, the insult to the gentleman of Bexo. You put it? So the house, so the house, look at the house. Look at the house they gave the man. Now, 
these condos he is saying he wants to build for St. Lucia will be like the projects Nupa Vesa. We do not want that in St. Lucia. Let me tell you, a set of boastful men with colorful words and they can't work. Where is Samuel Bowers? I've always had interaction during the election. I still give him blows. He still give me blows. But Sam was never disrespectful towards me. Samuel Bowers, he is an SLP man. They had to choose him for Castries North. But they, they, put, they didn't send him and snake oil went. And you see the comments happening in our country? Samuel Bowers was fired because he spoke up against the rubbish Richard Frederick wants to pass as development, housing development. And if you really read what Samuel Bowers was posting and showing, he's well read, he's, he, he's well educated and experienced in terms of, you know, revitalizing the housing sector in St. Lucia. Philippe J. Pierre. Man, I don't even know. I don't have words for you. Again, my dictionary ran out because it's the unmonal dictionary I have these days. My dictionary ran out. It is the unmonal <laughs> dictionary I have. I, I, I don't have words to describe you again. <laughs> well, I think we need to carry this. Like, well, we want our country and our lives to return to money. I don't have no more words in my country because you said we are re-beginning. The unmonalness is too much for me to begin. The unmonalness, I cannot comprehend that. You have a man like Samuel Bowers. Why, you, you know, this, this administration is all for friends, family, and cliques. Why you didn't put Sam? Number one, Samuel Bowers will not look for friends and family. Samuel Bowers would look for the Maliways because Samuel understands the plight of people when they do not have proper housing. Now, this man, I, I didn't cut all his tape for you, but I listened to this man saying, Richard Frederick saying, Oh, Castries is so clean now. Castries has never been so clean, people. I wish I didn't have nothing to go undo in Castries. I wish I had nothing to do go on doing cash trades. I was lobbying my rep when he was there for us to get a bank, maybe Bank of St. Lucia, one of them, get them down in cul-de-sac. I was trying to lobby my, my rep for us to get, I know he was going to do some nice food things, so that's a nice line. You just drive from your home, five minutes you're there, or everybody have their different things cooking, a, a nice... Um, place he was going to put there for the people of Castro South and we asked him to put a little cinema or something for us we would not come to Castries. Castries is like a dirty place Castries is like a dirty place I cannot walk in yesterday I had dental appointment different things we could not walk in Castries things jotting out ready to take out your eyes people all on the sidewalk people knocking you when the former mayor was there, Francis. He ensured the city was kept to a standard. The city is now like a flea market because you know why? You're bringing back the people down to poverty level because when they were trying to elevate them to a better standing in society, you'll fight down the mayor, fight down Alan Chastney saying, they're not good, they're not good, they're not good. You'll fought them down. So right now, even dogs free in, in cash, even dogs selling in cashries. Dogs selling in cashries. <laughs> dogs selling in cashries. Dogs for the rats. The, the rats having a love fest. Huh? Food establishments all over the place. What nastiness is happening in this place? This is where I cook at my home. Castries is, is filthy. And, and we must teach, and this is why I say teach our people, teach our vendors. You have to elevate in terms of the government providing a proper place for these people to sell their goods. A nice place. I would want to know, okay, Let's go to that nice place. All the vendors are there. Let's go and see what they have. Sometimes you have a friend from overseas, want something different, you know. You, you elevate your vendors. But you have them 
on the side of the street, tarpaulin, things ready to prick my eye. I people knocking me here, there, and everywhere. And you come and say, Cashews is the most clean man. Go, go and sit down. I, I was a magic. Papi show. Yeah. Dogs in the street. Dogs mate, mating in the street. You want, when, let me tell you, when I used to go to Castries during the time of UWP Peterson Reign, I used to ask, hey, hey, wow, Castries so clean, spotless, nice. It, 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 it was nice just walking into the city. And I don't want to go there. It's it, the same dog mess y'all bring back. My people, we have lots of rural tonight. <laughs> but before I go to the lots of rural, let me tell y'all that, eh, I like, I, I love y'all. Marilyn's bought me Mizzy coffee. Whoa, I jumped from my sleep and I missed the beginning of the life. <laughs> I really don't think it's his mono. <laughs> anyway, I am here now. So good night, Susu and Akim. Valis Lloyd, thank you for your coffees, darling. Maggie, Magilda, thanks, darling. Anu, Anu, can I? Thank you, darling. And Ravi. Thanks for that wonderful message and thanks for becoming a member, Ravi. Stay he said to me, stay true to yourself. Put the pressure where it's needed. I will, darling. And I mentioned Mag Maggie already. Thanks for the coffees. So my people, if lying was a person, we're going on them. We are going on them now. I think I finished with Frederick. Okay, take a listen to this video, Ernest on the hot seat. In the hot seat this evening is the Minister for Tourism, Dr. Ernest Hillier, and he will be answering on questions concerning Rovergate, as well as what to expect for Vax Mass 2022. Thank you for joining me in the hot seat, Dr. Hillier. Thank you very much, Crystal, and it's a delight once again to, to join you. Dr. Hiller, um, the leader of the opposition, once again last week, um, touched on what is now being dubbed by the United Workers' Party, Rovergate, by um, filing a judicial review with the High Court, and, claim, and he has claimed that um, the Comptroller of Customs, upon advice from, the, from our present AG, um, decided to drop the case against you on the Range Rover. Did you use political expedience and ministerial power to get the case dropped? Well, I mean, put it that way. First of all, let me just say that um, I think something is wrong with Alan Chastney. I, I really do. Um, I mean, he seems to have an obsession with me which belies any common understanding. I mean, whatever I may have done to him, I think he probably should take it as a man and just move on. Um, because this is absurd, really, really absurd. Let me put it in context for you. This, Alan Shastin has said, live on television, radio, uh, HDS, that it is my vehicle, I paid for it, but the invoice came in the name of the High Commission, therefore I gave it back as a gift, and I have now taken it back. Now that's recorded, I mean, I can share the clip with you and you can use it. So he said this is your, this is his, um, he paid for it, but the invoice was on the High Commission name, so therefore he gave it back as a gift, and now he's taken back his gift without the state giving it to him. Now, this is an absurdity. So he is saying that there's an issue. What's the issue? I was a diplomat in England, so I, could, I had privileges, I had immunities, I did not pay taxes, so I could not have defrauded the government of the United Kingdom from taxes. I was a returning diplomat, I did not pay taxes. In fact, the entire receipt of the vehicle and clearing of the vehicle was done by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It was delivered to my home. I did not, I was not required to pay taxes. So I did not defraud the St. Lucian government. What is the issue for Alan Chastney? He believes that because the invoice came on the name of the commission to clear the vehicle and to ship it to me, therefore, Something is wrong with this. Well, okay, if you see something wrong with it, what's wrong with it? Two controllers of customs on his instructions said that there was nothing wrong with the, the processes followed. In fact, one controller said the only outstanding issue was the fact that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs had not paid the VAT on the vehicle, not me. 
they started making arrangements to pay it. It was stopped by the Ministry of Finance. We know who the Minister of Finance was. So then Chico then became controller. There is a report written by Chico, which virtually says they were acting on the instruction of the, the, the Prime Minister, Alan Chastney. So he virtually caused there to be action taken against me in relation to this vehicle for his spiteful purposes. Of course, we, the courts ask us to go into mediation. Mediation is a court-appointed process. You are asked by the court to, to enter mediation. We started mediation before the elections, before, with Chico, and we were arriving at a resolution. There was election, the government changed, Chico period of acting ended, a new controller comes in. A third controller now says to the mediation that I've reviewed the file and this is totally unnecessary. There was no need to charge Dr. Hile for not giving us an invoice that we had already. It was spiteful, it was unnecessary. Went back to the court and said to the court that this has been settled via mediation and therefore um, the case is ended. The controller had the right to do so. The controller, the charge against me was brought by the customs department and they dropped the charges. Now let me also clarify that the Prime Minister and Claudius Francis Speaker House were not in court with me. They actually came and waited outside for me until the case was done. They never came into court. And Philip JPI, before becoming Prime Minister, had been attending court with me as a show of support for his, his parliamentarian and his candidate. So there's no issue of political interference. This was a court-appointed process, the mediation between Customs and myself, and we resolved the matter. But somewhere in Alan Chastney's mind, he believes he can ask the court. He's actually asking for leave to, fight, to, to, to ask for judicial review. He's not been given permission for judicial review yet. Huh? He's asking for leave. So the court will look at his application and see whether or not it will be heard in the first place. It may never be heard. And if it is heard, he then have to explain what's his interest in it. <laughs>
saying, if you already have a magistrate saying, why is this case coming in front of her and you guys should have resolved it, why did you remove Peter Chico as the controller of customs? Your Lucians need to think. Politicians are not my god. I love Alan Chastney. I love Guy, but if they do crap, I'm going to tell them they do crap, and I still love them, and I'm still their friend. Because this is how you create an environment for, for your parliamentarians to do better. But some of you are listening, and I understand where Shas coming from in terms of what was done was wrong. Right? So why didn't you all leave, okay, for the interim? Stephen Julian, I don't know if he resigned or what he did his contract. And Stephen Julian, you stay there as AG. Peter Chico, and let's carry on with this thing and show the people of St. Lucia you better than Alan Chastney. We, not me, but you all voted out Alan Chastney to make these boys do what they want. Look what Labour do, y'all, and what are y'all doing now? Now this Ernest Hiller, bon dear Jesus, Ernest Hiller is saying, Ernest Hiller was my good friend, but I am, I, honestly, Ernest has just disappointed me. People telling me I didn't know Ernest. I knew Ernest from school, right? And, and our children swimming and everything. And, and, and I was very close to Ernest, talking to Ernest. I even said to Ernest about this. I said, Ernest, just give the people the invoice and pay the 3000 or whatever you have to pay. Oh, so, so I'm not doing that. So you're asked, take, now take what come in for you. You understand? I just don't understand. If you have a friend, and this is why Alan Chastney and Guy Joseph have to appreciate so so. Because I love them and I will tell them when they're doing shit and still love them. Right? So, Ernest Hille with the young lady, Miss, Miss, Miss Revere, in the interview, Ernest Hille is saying to the young lady that, what's his name? Philip J.P. and Claudius Francis never came into the court with him. Let us demo them now. Dr. Ernest Hille, in the company of his attorney, Lon Theophilus, was in high spirits following Thursday's magistrate hearing. The Land Rover Sport SUV, which had been at the center of allegations against Hille by the former administration, will be returned to him. In addition, the Customs and Excise Department will be compensating Dr. Hille for loss of use of the vehicle. That figure is to be agreed upon by Hille's legal team and the Customs Department. A couple months, a few months ago, had requested that this matter be brought before uh, for mediation. I mean, she could not understand how a matter like that was before the courts. Uh, we started mediation before the elections. Of course, there was a break for the elections because um, I might be a candidate. And we had mediation yesterday. Um, and of course, you know, the mediation process resolved the matter. And we came to court today to formally um, inform the court um, and basically the control of customs um, withdrew the charges and having withdrawn the charges um, agreed that my vehicle will be returned to me and should be released by tomorrow and of course delivered to me no later than next Friday. Prime Minister Philippe and Speaker of the House Claudius Francis were also present at the court hearing in a show of support. I was here, so it's nothing new. What I want to, to ensure, to show you we believe that justice must be had for everybody in the country. So Dr. Hiller made himself present at court so that the system can work. We believe that no man is above the law and every man has to be treated equally when it comes to the law. So we've made ourselves present today in the court to ensure that the system works and we are very satisfied that the system has worked. The settlement comes a little over a year after the vehicle was seized from Dr. Hiller's Rodney Bay residence by customs officers acting on directors from the then Comptroller of Customs, Peter Chico. Chico claimed there were several irregularities with the importation of the vehicle. According to him, Dr. Hiller failed to produce certain documents supporting the importation of the vehicle to customs, which he imported during his stint as St. Lucia's High Commissioner to the UK. Hiller, in response, had filed a lawsuit against Chico for misconduct in public office. In spite of the settlement, Dr. Hiller says he will continue with that lawsuit as the action taken against him was a blatant act of political abuse, which he will not allow to just slide. The vehicle is a material thing, it's, a, it's, a piece of, it's just a vehicle. 
there is a deeper issue there, and the deeper issue is what Chico and Alan Shastny did, malfeasance in public office. Alan Shastny abused his office as prime minister to go after a political opponent, to discredit him, to try and destroy his character locally, regionally, internationally. And he's, he used public office to do so. Peter Chico participated in that, knowingly that what he was doing was wrong. Two controllers before him did not agree. And now a new controller also agree that there is, that is totally unnecessary and is wrong. When you you could be fired from the public service? Well, he should have been. He should be fired immediately, immediately, because you just we cannot allow those things to happen in Saint Lucia. I mean, this was not a mistake by a public officer. This was not, you know, um, incompetence by a public officer. This was willful, calculated. A public officer using his authority to go after a political opponent. I mean, we cannot allow that to happen in the country. For me, the case against Chico and the case against Alan Chastney is more important than even getting the vehicle back. For the DPS News World, I am saying Romulus. That's why I will say Ernest has a problem. That's why I have to say Ernest has a problem. Peter Chico has never... Peter, Peter, if you don't know, Peter, Peter Chico and Ernest were friends. They went to Cashier's Conference just like me. I knew Peter Chico from Compre. They were higher forms than me. I'm younger than them. Ernest too. I know these boys from Compre. And, and, and these boys used to converse. I, I, I have been privy to, to, to speak to Mr. Chico. I, I'm not going to tell you confidential things he's, tell, he's told me. But um, this whole situation could have gone away. But you see when arrogance comes into play and getting wrong advice from people, this is what happens. Now, my issue with this again, and to me, this is malfeasance in office. The government just came in, and this is what is happening. Where is the showman Emmanuel? Where is the new controller? We, the people of St. Lucia, you and those are ministers. We need it because Chico, you know, I, 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 I pray that you win your case. And not, I shouldn't say I pray. You're going to win that case because... If the magistrate, the judge, or whoever is fair, you're going to win that case. You're going to win that case. Chico was not the controller from 2015. So here's what happened. I am the British High Commissioner overseas. Right? I bring down my vehicle. Right? Kenny pulled me out to come so I can run a seat thinking I would have won in 2016 and everything would have been fine. But I must say, I know Alan Shastney is taking licks for that, but so keep your head up. Continue pursuing it. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. You cannot be wrong and strong. Right is right and wrong is wrong. So basically, and I'm going to play a, a video for you to understand. Alan Shastney explained this beautifully. The issue with that vehicle is very simple. And in life, sometimes we find ourselves behind bars because of our arrogance. In life, sometimes you have to just say, okay, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And I believe if Ernest Hille could not have presented the invoice in his name, and this is what, this is what... Peter Chico, acting on behalf of customs, wanted the invoice in his name. Peter Chico was not even concerned to concern about the VAT, the VAT. He just wanted to perfect his entry to say that this is the invoice, Ernest Hinley. But he could not have an invoice in his name. Because you're only allowed one, as a diplomat, one vehicle per year. You cannot in the same year buy how many vehicles. How many, how many vehicles can one person drive? You can only drive one vehicle at a time. So Peter Chico wants his integrity. And he said, Peter Chico, um, and there's a GoFundMe for Peter Chico support and people. 
Peter Chico is a is a good man. You know what? I I will go down fighting just like guy. I I am the female version of guy. Y'all cabricus. I will go down fighting for my right and my integrity. And Peter Chico is doing that. So Peter Chico has a GoFundMe page. Just go to GoFundMe, type in Peter Chico and support him. And let me tell you, let me come in your skin again. Let me come in your skin again. You want a change in your country? Support what is right. The same way I'm telling you all, support me, buy the coffee. I, tonight, you all, you, all, you all going overboard and supporting in coffee. And I love you all for that. Because you understand the mission. A lot of people get into understand the mission. The same way, the amount of flubbers people, the amount of for, you see the people in the diaspora, I love them. Just, they just, just give. But the amount of people, even if you cannot give 10 US, give 5 US. How many of you all, 40 something thousand people voted for Flobo? Flobos, you all need to change your mindset. You are not supporting Chico because the situation looking like it is Flobo. You're supporting him on the basis of principle. You're supporting him on the basis of principle. And that is why I'm supporting Peter Chico on the basis of principle. And you know, I like to get my facts straight. I, I spent an hour. Uh, maybe about two weeks ago, speaking to Peter. And when I heard Ernest came and say that on the, on, on the, the lady's show, um, the hot seat, I was like, what the hell is this man saying? But y'all flow, flow, you see the SLPs? They, they, they dying in their nonsense, but a lot of them changing because of so-so, because they say I real. Some of them would die in, they will stay with labor come what? Right? But whether it was an SLP person, Chico was SLP, UW, whatever it is, we have to support people on the basis of principle. And you all need to go and support him in the GoFundMe. I know some people are putting money on the account and whatever, you know, helping. But put your money, put your, your, your mouth, put your mouth where your money is. Don't just lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, you don't like life, you don't like things. You got to put your money where your mouth is. You're calling me iron lady because I'm putting my money and my mouth where everything is. Right? To speak the truth for y'all. So when we come in here and speaking the truth and trying to do right, put your money where your mouth is. Go and support. Just go, go find me. Google Peter Chico and go and support him. Go and support him. That's what you all have to do. Stand on principle. And I spoke, and, and listen, we, they are making Peter to be a devil. And the guy is not a devil. If you look, Peter, from at school, Peter, quiet, Peter doing it. Peter is one on, of principle. And he is saying two controllers before. So what the hell we care about two controllers before? Two controllers before could be doing shit, not doing their work. And this guy say, let us perfect this entry. Because when, when for us to bring our vehicles there, y'all, y'all, y'all want our mother Y'all want our father, y'all want our great, 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 great father that died and, 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 our, and our neden that died 50 years ago. Y'all want everything, but it's okay for a minister. No, wrong is wrong. We need to hold them bloody ministers, whether it's SLP or UWP, accountable. Because at the end of the day, you and I are the ones suffering. Not them. Not them. You know? And, 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 and to say, oh, he should be fired. My God, let me tell you something. I want Ernest Hiller, after that court case, to, be res to resign or whatever. Ernest is a hot, hot mess. Ernest is a hot mess. You want him fired, fired for doing his job. And if y'all had nothing to hide, I would not have a new age as yet. I would have keep the, the guy, whatever his name is. I would have kept the guy. Stephen, Julian, whatever his name is, and I would have kept Chico and let us go. Chico right now has to be paying his own legal fee. Where is the CSA? Where is the CSA in all this? The CSA is a political organization and they need to just take that whole organization, put some bags and drop it in the sea because they're not for the workers. You cannot, this is why nothing happens in this country. You don't see they had to make snake oil bend down low, bend like he do in limbo, bend his back like a shrimp and give the people the 14% increase that we could not afford because all the CSA and all of them, all the unions were on his back, he bent his back like a shroom it almost breaks white cliff white cliff just jump over it
Because this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. This can never be right. This can never be right. And y'all flubbers, yes, I'm talking to y'all. I'm talking to y'all. If we want to see justice, even some of the, the Senusha Labour Party supporters, if you want to see justice, you're going to contribute. You're going to contribute to the fund. A lot of y'all are just there with hot air talking and y'all don't support no movement for the truth. Our country is too small to be so corrupt and nasty. People are saying, yes, you are right, laborers, you're too faith, all of them. Our political system is, is, is um, fueled by many of these organizations. So Ernest Hiller said, when I heard about, you know, long before he actually came and said that, I spoke to Peter Chico, we had a long chat, and the man explained everything to me. The man never apologized. The man said, sorry, I'm going to court to fight for my integrity. Now, we have a tape with um, P um, Peter Chico, where he called into Sky FM, clarifying what Ernest said, right? But he, he called me for, and then Ernest, he said, I have the tape. I have the tape. I got to present it in court. If Ernest had the tape, my people, don't you believe Ernest Hilaire? Would have played it. And another thing Ernest said on his show with the young lady in the hot seat that Philip J. Pierre and them were not there to support him. They were not in the courtroom. So we are also saying right now that the young lady who reported this is a liar because we are saying she is saying that um, Philip J. Pierre and um, Claudius Francis were in the courthouse to give him some moral support. And this man is now saying that Philip J. Pierre was not in the house. They are waiting outside. My God, Ernest, advice from me, just shut your mouth. Because you're burying yourself day in, day out with your bullshit. Listen to this video. This is the morning drive with Tukul cool Morning. Tukul, cool, good morning. Yes, it is. This is Chico, Peter Chico. Oh, uh, my brother, talk to us. I just want to clarify this thing. I'm, I just put on a radio here and I hate all sorts of withdrawal, right? Mediation happened on March 15th. On March 15th or 17th, thereabout, my lawyer did inform the Dr. Onetile and his legal team that whatever deal they want to give, it will not be accepted, and the matter has to be reviewed. My certificate has to be reviewed in the court. Okay. I must be vindicated in the court. Okay. There is no deal. The matter is due for hearing on the 20th of April, and I will be in the court on the 30th of April. Great, Thank you very much. I great, my brother. Thanks very much, my brother. This is the morning drive with Tukul Morning. Tukul, good morning. Yes, it is. This is Chico, Peter Chico. Oh, uh, my brother, talk to us. I just want to clarify this thing. I'm, I just put on a radio here and I hate all sorts of withdrawal, right? Mediation happened on March 15th. On March 15th or 17th, thereabout, my lawyer did inform the Dr. Tonetile and his legal team that whatever deal they want to give, it will not be accepted and the matter has to be reviewed. My certificate has to be reviewed in the court. Okay. I must be vindicated in the court. Okay. There is no deal. The matter is due for hearing on the 20th of April and I will be in the court on the 30th of April. Great, Thank you very much. great my brother. Thanks very much, my brother. So we are hearing from Peter Chico. We are hearing from Peter Chico saying he 
never apologized that is going all around saying that he has apologized and he has never apologized and his integrity is what that counts for him and that he wants to be vindicated in the court of law why is peter chico the only one footing that bill now i am going to play a tape for you and i'm going to give you i'm going to give you commentary in between it to show how alan chasne debunked Thaddeus Antoine on Timothy's show. So people sit back, take a listen. The elephant in the room is a, a situation where you have um, friends defending friends. Is, is that something that um, people frown upon in the courts and so on? Because I mean, you, uh, oh, we have a call. Good evening to you. This is Newsmaker Live. You're on the air. Good evening, Tim. Hi, good evening Alan, to you. Alan Shastany here. Hi, good evening to you, Mr. Shastney. And, and good evening to my very good friend, uh, Mr. Thaddeus Antoine. Good evening, um, Mr. Shastney. Hi. Um, Tim, there are so many um, questions to be an to ask, because um, I want to first congratulate you on, on, a, on a great job tonight, and, and Thaddeus and, and attempting to bring clarity to this very difficult situation. So let me ask the question, because Thaddeus obviously is very aware of the details of this case. When did the car come to St. Lucia? December 2015. December 2015, I believe. The car, listen, I'm playing this tape for you to understand because Lucians have a habit. They say, laughing. Listen, the car came to St. Lucia December 2015. Yes. Yes. It was just before um, Christmas time. So it came December 2015. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the elections was not until when? Um, June 2016, June 6, 2016, I believe, yeah. yeah. So the car came in on December. Yes. And elections was not until June. Yes. And that means that the controller of customs at the time was a gentleman called Mr. Fenelon. Yeah, um, I, and we've I heard so. from yeah. other customs officials that... Normally, when we have a pre-delivery, mm -hmm. that 30, 60 days, 90 days maximum. Mm -hmm. So don't you think that if this was a straightforward matter, that the entry would have been perfected before June of 2016? I can't speak to, speak to that. I, I don't know why it was not perfected then. I mean, okay. the, first, the first time we knew of um, any issue with the vehicle there's a pre um, um, and perfect entry was in 20, February of 2018, when we were invited right. to a meeting and, of customers. And, and, yeah. and so you're talking about now three years after the car came in. Yes. Your client realized that the car's entry still had not been perfected. Well, he was, he was brought and to his attention. Uh, because okay. at the end of the day, he, was, he was not the broker. Um, the broker is supposed to, well, the Ministry of External Affairs broker was supposed to ensure that all the documents in place. It was only brought to his attention in 2018 by the Customs Department that um, your VAT is still outstanding. So, <clears throat> I don't think it was that the VAT was outstanding as that was brought to your client's attention. No, no, well, I, and, I, I, I wasn't, well, but well, with all respect, me, with all respect, me, Mr. Shastney, yes. I was the one who attended the meeting. I was only okay. received the letter, and it said the VAT was outstanding, and it's, they said to Dr. Hiller that you had to pay the VAT. And we well, showed them the cabinet conclusion that says that all taxes for retained diplomats have to be paid um, by the government. That's what so, was raised. And so now that, now that your client is in government, uh -huh. we can, he can verify some facts. Yes. So in fact, that, that is not really what happened. What okay. actually triggered the action mm -hmm. was when the audit department required a, a, <clears throat> a request of the inventory of all of the foreign officers. Yeah, and but we, we would not have uh, known that. Wait a second. Wait a second. I know that. I know you wouldn't have known that. Okay. And I did not know that either because the audit department, as you know, acts independently from the prime minister and from all departments. It's a yes, completely independent department. And as a result of that audit, it was discovered that there was a vehicle that was registered in the name of the High Commission. So the invoice was in the name of the High Commission. The registration of the vehicle was in the name of the High Commission. Yes. 
permission was uh, requested to get the car duty free in the UK. Let's make that clear. Mm-hmm. And also permission was requested of the British authorities to allow the car to be exported, mm-hmm. all in the name of the High Commission. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, by all appearances from the High Commission's office in the UK, it was an asset of the High Commission. And what they did is they sent that information to the CAPSEC, who then sent it to the custodian of all government assets, Mm -hmm. which is the director of finance. Yes. Right? The director of finance then investigated the matter and ascertained that there was no record of the state paying for a vehicle. That's right. There was no record of the state owning a vehicle. um, Owning a vehicle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But accepted the fact that the documents were in the name of the High Commission. Yes. So they found out that the, the, the car in question was a vehicle that was registered here in St. Lucia under the name of Dr. Hilaire. Yes. And they contacted and wrote Customs as a very famous letter of November 20th, 2017. Yes. In which they indicated to Customs all the information I provided to you. Yes and made a request of customs that it, in order to determine the next steps, the ownership of the vehicle becomes essential. Yes. And that they ask customs to confirm the ownership. Yes. And I believe that that's where they contacted you all. And the response that you and your client gave at the time mm-hmm. was that this was a political witch hunt and exactly what you said tonight, yes. that your client had already provided all of the information and that the fact that the car came in in a consignment was in your mind and your client's mind sufficient evidence that he owned the car yes despite the fact that there was contrary evidence well produce the contrary evidence who the contrary, the, 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 the contrary evidence becomes that in 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 witness statements from the uk government the car dealer which is range rover mm-hmm. indicated the car was sold to the high commission no, 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 no. I'm telling you, I showed, I showed. Your client is now in government. He can go through the files and he can find a letter. And if you're happy, I will be happy to have a press conference tomorrow. And I will provide actually copies of those letters. No, that's a matter for you. That's a matter for you. No, no problem. I I'm have email saying, exchanges. So I'm, so I'm just, hold on, Mr. Chastney. Hold on. I have yeah, email right. exchanges from Patrick Alford of Land Rover, mm-hmm. who clearly shows that the vehicle was purchased by Dr. Uh, by sorry, Tafawa Williams. The, the that's first not true. invoice. So that, the that's first not true. Invo- so that's the not fact true. Is, no, it's I, not true. I showed it to Tim early on. I showed it to Tim early on. Tim could confirm to you. I so know, but we doctored the, the emails as well? I, but I can also show you now that's exactly what was attempted to do. That it was attempted to purchase the car in the name of Tafawa Williams. But when your client found out that Tafawa Williams did not qualify as a diplomat, which he said in his own press conference. No, 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 let's, let's, let's be clear, let's be clear, let's be clear, let's be clear, Dr. Tafar Williams was a diplomat, yes. but the diplomat who already had a vehicle registered in his name, so he did, so he did so not, he, qualify, so he could not so he, register no, another vehicle. He could register another vehicle. He, he could, could not. He, no, he could, he could. What he could not do, no, wait a second, what he could not do was register a second vehicle that would have been purchased duty free. Diplomatic vehicle, yes. That's okay. right. Yes. So he could not get one duty free. So the issue is about the duty. And the fact is is that there is a letter on record uh, of communication between Dr. Hilaire's secretary, Ms. Mm-hmm. Hamilton, and the FCO's office, in which the FCO says further to our telephone conversation today, we now understand that you all made a mistake. And the car is not owned by Tafawa Williams, but in fact, the car is owned by the High Commission. Mm-hmm. So the fact is, there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the car was deliberately put in the name of the High Commission. Okay. And I would suggest to you that it was done so in order to get the car duty-free in the UK. And now, here, don't you agree the... that Dr. Hille, as a diplomat, is entitled duty-free of a vehicle? Yes, he is. On the Vienna Convention? Correct. And guess yeah. what? And guess what? And this is what brings an interesting point to some of the things you said tonight. So, in fact, Dr. Hildare purchased the car duty-free. 
yes. in the UK. Yes. And in fact, and I'm going to use this word very carefully, he lied to the British authorities. You and can't told use you can't use a word as lied as I, being careful. I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm jeopardizing I'm, I'm team. Yeah, I'm to you. I'm, I'm jeopardizing I'm, I'm, team. I'm, I'm, you hear you hear those suckers. You hear how they are. But I like Shas, you know. Shas not afraid of his skin. There, let me tell you what the St. Lucia Labour Party does do. And we have seen it with all of them, from Prime Minister in SLP right on. When you're trying to bring out your point or say something, they're quick to say, oh, you're jeopardizing DBS, you're jeopardizing um, Team Show, you're jeopardizing with that word liar to sue. That's all they can sue. That is why they so sue, they went on sue Peter Chico, not knowing Peter Chico going to win that case. Let's carry on. Word has lied has I, been careful. I, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm jeopardizing I'm, I'm team show. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm jeopardizing I'm, I'm, team I'm, and DBS. I'm, 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 I'm speaking been to you. I'm speaking to you so you can record. Mr. Former Prime Minister, let's I'm, be very careful there eh, because I am. I'm yeah, being let's very, be very careful. careful. If you don't have I'm the being, evidence, let's I'm, be very I'm, careful. I do. I do. I do. Yeah. I do have the evidence. I do have the. Evidence. You, you you heard Boschas. Bosha said he had the evidence, and I can understand why Alan Chastney is pursuing this relentlessly. Because we cannot allow that to happen. We cannot allow these things, whether it's Flobo or SLB, we cannot. Now, Alan Chastney was the man for the season. Alan Chastney, as I said, came in to build a nation and just do what he had to do. He wasn't looking for friends. Look at, look at this Senator Labour Party. They have placed all their friends, their families in position. Alan Chastney Pate Fessa. Because this is why a lot of the United Workers Party supporters are upset with him. Because he just went in there as a newbie, didn't play politics, but played for everyone in St. Lucia. And this is what the United Workers Party supporters, y'all need to understand. We need to understand. He came in there for the people right and i can see i can foresee in less than two years they're going to call elections and as i've always said it's not the united workers party who's going to call the elections the people of this country because we are sick of these people carry on my dear be careful eh? because i am yeah I'm being we, let's very, be very, very careful. careful if you don't have I'm the being, evidence let's I, be very I'm, careful i do i do i do, yeah. I do i do have the evidence i do have the evidence and that's why i'm saying it. the fact is is that he purchased the car in his name and then transferred the car over to his brother. Yes. And his brother Paul brought the car, which he was entitled to do, to bring it in duty free. But the fact is, is that he lied to the British authorities and told the British authorities that it was his car. And it was because he purchased that car in his name, he could not qualify for a second duty free vehicle. So if I and use, I if I hold use, hold point, hold a point. If I use a friend's discount to purchase a vehicle, right? Am I yeah. lying? Yes, because you, you, in order to have that duty. This is something you cannot do. You cannot use a friend's discount to purchase anything. Like, for instance, if um, I cannot go use my ex-husband's um, whatever he has, because he flies here and there to say, okay, I'm going to come and buy some perfume, some expensive perfume, and um, here is his thing. He's a pilot, whatever. I cannot do that. They need to jail me. I cannot do that. So if I'm going to buy things for my son, right, and I need it duty-free, I cannot say that he has to be there to do what he has to do to buy duty-free. So imagine a lawyer. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, give me strength for eh? you. Because this is draining. I cannot believe a lawyer would sit on a talk show. And for that, that has been heard by millions of people. And for the world to be laughing at us. And this is the government we have. I'm ashamed. Carry on, my dear. Free. It had to be in your name. And I would ask but it wasn't my name and I disposed of it. Do, do, no, but do you think that under the arrangement, diplomatic arrangement, that a diplomat from St. Lucia, a senior diplomat, should do that? And then, and then to make matters worse, attempted to do it a second time by putting the car into Fowler Williams' name. And when to Fowler was rejected because he could not qualify for the duty-free, he put it in the name of the High Commission. So here's the interesting point. Is 
because it becomes registered in the name of the St. Lucia High Commission, uh -huh. there are persons very qualified that would say that it became an asset of the state. And when it becomes an asset of the state, the only way to dispose of that asset is for the director of finance to agree. But the director now, of finance has clearly said it was not an asset of the state. She has no, no record of it. She, You've uh, not uh, paid for uh, it. Uh, yes. It's not she your said, record. There's no record. But you, you would agree... You would agree, based on the letters and everything else, that the High Commission deliberately put the car in the name of the state. Well, that's the matter for the High Commission, get... isn't it? Sorry? That's the matter for the High Commission, isn't it? Imagine a lot... Tiny thanks. Tiny thanks. I need the strength. Thanks, Tiny. Imagine a lawyer is saying, Lord, I... <sighs> Imagine a lawyer is saying that is a matter for the High Commission. So who is who is investigating the High Commission? High Commission, the High Commission is doing what they want. The High Commission, for a lawyer to say that, even a child going to secondary school would tell you the High Commission is being governed by the Ministry of foreign affairs the high commission is not a law unto themselves so a vehicle was placed in the name of the high commission and the high commission got all the perks that the high commission as an organization is supposed to get the vehicle comes to saint lucia in the name of the high commission but now the high commission overseas is is a law unto themselves and deregistering the vehicle and doing bacchanal like that. This cannot be right. I understand where Shastney was going because initially when I heard about that, Roro and Unes was telling me about it. I'm like, what's the first? But when I studied this and went through that, I'm like, they are winning Unes and this lawyer. I know where he gets his law degree from. Right? Paper bag lawyer. I know where he gets his degree from. Shastney is winning y'all on a technicality and Chico is too because when I spoke to Mr. Chico I understood where he was coming from he was not even too pre-concerned about the um VAT he was he just wanted the invoice in the name of Ernest Hiller to perfect the entry y'all are going to lose this case and if anybody who knows body language because body language speech is 99 percent of your body language i watch people body language and i watch Ernest, and i know Ernest know he's losing the simplest thing you should have done when so so tell Ernest, pay the people the thing give them the invoice if you don't have the invoice you say okay i made an error and today that would have been behind you and you would have been able to go on with your life but you know the people you have around you anyway carry on my my dear the high commission deliberately put the car in the name of the state well that's the matter for the high commission get... isn't it sorry that's the matter for the high commission isn't it is it really the high commission is a state as a, a state authority well i'm saying that's a matter for them that you, it's not a matter for, for are you, no it's a matter for the high commission they have decided what it, what it did wow okay so you're saying that the high commission had the authority i am not it, saying to, they had authority to, to they have no authority register a car so so, so you, you know shas is boss they they say shas is a deck deck i like that deck deck eh? i want that deck deck for my prime minister although you're giving him stress eh? but shas is boss you all say shas is deck deck look 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 the deck deck the, the lawyer sitting there tadia's paper bag lawyer the man is saying you know, that's a matter from the British um, High High Commission. It's like they, they, they don't have um, authority. Now, what are you saying? I wouldn't want you to represent my cat. I wouldn't want you to represent my cat, Tadias. My cat will die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we need to carry this side of the Are you? die my cat would not survive anyway carry on my dear really the high commission is a state as a, as a state authority well i'm saying that's a matter for them you, it's not a matter for, for you, no it's a matter for the high commission they have decided what it, what it did wow okay so you're saying that the high commission had the authority i am not it, saying they to, had authority to, to they have no authority a car they have a registered car a car in the name of the high commission in the name of the high commission giving, uh, obtaining a friend's discount in order then to give that discount to Ernest. So the problem now 
is when the car arrived, and we now have established the fact that the car arrived in December of 2015. Mm -hmm. Six months went by under Fenelon. Let's call it your, your neutral um, uh, controller of customs. Mm -hmm. And the car was not cleared. And in fact, it is very extraordinary that a car that has not been cleared becomes registered at the Ministry of Transportation, and that becomes another topic of subject. But I want to bring it back to really the, the quintessential point here, in that you're saying that the most important thing is that the VAT be paid by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So yes, let, us we agree, yes. let us agree mm -hmm. that all returning diplomats, all returning diplomats, benefit from a duty-free car, yes. and that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will pay for the transportation of that car. Yes. And the Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs would also pay for the VAT of the car. Yes. But it's under the presumption that the car belongs to them. Because that benefit is not transferable. So even if I was to come in as a returning diplomat, I could not have the car in my wife's name. I could not have it in my father's name. I could not have it in my friend's name. But whose name was the car when he came to San Lucia? That's the issue. He declared that the car was in his name. And when customs found out through the Ministry of Finance that, in fact, that there was evidence to show that the car was actually registered in the name of the High Commission, no, 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 no. Let's, let's well, get clear. The, whole, the, 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 the vehicle, Mr. Shastin, hold that point, Mr. Shastin, hold that point. The yeah. vehicle was deregistered. It was deregistered. By who? It was by the High Commission. The vehicle was deregistered in the UK. You hear what a lawyer is saying? You know, I had to study law. That's what I wanted to study. But when I realized what does go on there, I say I'm not studying law. Right? I went to study finance. I say I'm not studying law. You hear what the man say there? Pull it back a little. We'll play. You hear what the man say? The man say the vehicle was de registered by the British High Commission. This is why you'll have to think. If it came down here, if the British High Commission bought the vehicle and when it came down here, the document showed British High Commission, why is it going back to the British High Commission? Think St. Lucia. It's not about UWP or SF. You have to make sure all politicians on both sides do what is right. Shouldn't that document from the British High Commission go to the Foreign um, um, Affairs Department? Because they are the ones that deal with the diplomats. Carry on, my dear. And when customs found out through the Ministry of Finance that in fact, that there was evidence to show that the car was actually registered in the name of the High Commission. No, 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 no. Let's, let's get clear. The, 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 the vehicle, Mr. Shastin, hold that point, Mr. Shastin, hold that point. The vehicle was deregistered. It was deregistered. By who? It was by the High Commission. The vehicle was deregistered in the UK. The plates were returned. No, 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 The vehicle was deregistered. Sir, I would beg, I would, I would beg to differ with you. The vehicle was deregistered. The High Commission is. Uh, government of St. Lucia office. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. And once the vehicle becomes an asset of the High Commission, it becomes an asset of the state. But it never became the asset uh, of, the, of, of, the, of, of, of the High Commission. It did. It was registered in the name. The invoice isn't... Well, how, how come when Tafal Williams? Tafal put the first deposit in his name. Uh -huh. And the first copy of the invoice was in his name. Yes. When he went now to pay the remaining amount of the car... Mm -hmm. He changed the invoice into the name of the High Commission. And I showed Tim why, why that was done. Why was it done? Because the registration of the vehicle and the invoice had to coincide. Why? They had, they had to coincide. The that's dealer, not true, the dealer said... That's not true. What, so then, uh, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. When you go back to the vehicle that was bought by Ernest, that was for his brother, mm -hmm. the invoice and everything else was in his name. Yes. So I was, I, I, I was why, registered why, in his why, name. Why, why, and he registered. Have, why couldn't have Ernest put everything in his name? Because Ernest was, was no longer in St. Lu is no longer in the UK, and he, he no was. longer could purchase a vehicle. Um, he was no longer in, in, in England to purchase the vehicle, and he could no longer get a diplomatic discount from Land Rover. He gets from BMW or Mercedes, but not from uh, Land Rover because, as a policy, they allow one vehicle purchase. No, yeah. sir. It, it's, not, it's not for Land Rover. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. And no, so no. the reality is, is that the car was put in the name of the High Commission. And it was, and order, and it was it, removed it, it, in the name of it, the High Commission. It cannot. How does it get removed? Because it was deregistered. 
deregistered. Okay, he is saying the vehicle was deregistered. Now, again, as I said to you, um, Chico is going to win him on a technicality. All Ernest had to do was to pay the $3,000 that I advise him to do. May he patently win. So, they're going to win him on a technicality because the vehicle came down as if it is the British High Commission or the one who paid it. It doesn't matter if the money didn't come from the government in St. Lucia, but the entry is saying the vehicle was purchased by the British High Commission. It was a simple matter. All the man had to say, I bought another vehicle for myself. I put it in the name of the British High Commission. Foreign Affairs would do what they have to do, notify whatever for him, because the only person who can dispose of a asset, and hear this well, is the Director of Finance. However, her limit is $10,000. Anything above $10,000, the Director of Finance has to have a committee where people send in their tenders, they advertise or whatever, their tenders to purchase or to dispose of the vehicle. So right away, based on the finance rules, based on what happened with customs in perfecting the entry, Ernest very well know he's in shit. Carry on. It's for everybody. No, and so no. the reality is, is that the car was put in the name of the High Commission. And it was, and it, and it was it, removed it, it, in the name of it, the High Commission. It cannot. How does it get removed? Because it was deregistered. Deregistered by whom? By the High Commission. But the High Commission doesn't have the authority once it becomes an asset of the state. So the fact is, is that your client did not reveal and did not seek the appropriate permissions to have that happen. You cannot use the state. So, Mr. Shastin, one, one more minute here because I want to take some other calls. Go no ahead. Problem, because I mean, let me just, let me just, let me just, no problem. And let me just say this. So the issue here really becomes about ownership. And therefore, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs could not pay the VAT until the ownership was established. Okay. And that was also confirmed by the letter of the Director of Finance. And what your client has failed to do at this point, is to prove that. Now, the fact is... Re he does, but, he but Mr. Shastny, we wait, have a democratic a system. I only have a minute, and, and a minute left. It's a democratic your system, client, your client and it has and no owners client. to prove anything. Okay, but then there's evidence that you were provided with that showed the car was registered in the name of the High Commission. Yes. And this is where maybe you're having to go back and reflect, because you are under the belief that, the, or it seems to be, that the High Commission is a separate entity the government of St. Lucia. It is, a, it, is, it is a body of the government of St. Lucia. And it's not as simple as the High Commission making the determination by itself. But Mr. Shastney, are you, aware, are you aware that registration is a presumption of ownership? Sir? Are you aware that registration is a presumption of ownership? Okay. Yeah? And what does that mean? But I, if I could show I paid for the vehicle, and you have confirmed... So you're talking about a beneficial vehicle. owner, but in this... No, 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 no. It's a presumption of ownership, no, but, you know, but, sir, a rebuttable let me presumption. Say this to you. When, when, when Paul Hillier gave the money to Ernest to pay for the car, yes, Ernest had their legal right to transfer the car or gift the car back to his brother. But I'm asking you, once the car becomes registered in the name of the state... The, the financial act takes over. No, but this, but no, no, no. Now, the, way, but, but, the, way but, that, the way that a state asset is disposed is through the director of finance. So the fact is that the director of finance and the government of Saint and all of the authorities were not informed of what he was doing. He acted unilaterally and caused the car to be in. And I would suggest to you the reason why he caused the car to be done that way is because he benefited from the duty free if the car was in his name he would have only benefited from the vat free and not the duty free and what is so sad and this is the reality what duty free are you talking about the, the, from the, in the, the uk VAT, the vat yeah the, no 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 every diplomat gets VAT free yes uh -huh. what he benefited from was the tx26 form that gives it to him duty free mm -hmm. three thousand pounds that mm -hmm. is what your client did all of this for Mm -hmm. And in the process of doing this and in denying what has happened and taking responsibility for what happened and making allegations against everybody a sundry that everybody else was wrong and he was right, he is now brought into question customs because it is hard to believe that a customs authority with something as basic and simple that this has been going on for six years.
But I will also have a press conference tomorrow, and I will provide all of the evidence of the communications that showed that the car was deliberately registered in the name of the St. Lucia High Commission. So, so my people, you understand why Alan Chastney is pursuing this relentlessly. It was a very simple matter, and like Uncle Chas said, unilaterally, the decision was made by the British High Commission. You cannot make decisions like that. It could have been said, I want to bring down another vehicle duty-free, and, and um, finance, um, not finance, foreign affairs may not have approved it. You would have to pay the TX, you would have to pay the duties, right, to the UK government. So I, I am in full support of Peter Chico for going out there, right? And I know your family are behind you and they're going to be supporting you and family is everything. We can have everybody supporting us, but when you see you have family supporting you, it's even better. And you have to visit me on my show, Mr. Peter Chico, after this situation because um, you are a compre boy like me. Ernest is a compre boy and all to me, this is just madness. This is, this is somebody, we, we, we as people, not only in position, but we as human beings must know when to stop. When we have done something wrong, okay, I, I make a blunder. You know, we cannot be acting arrogant like we, we, we are the shit, we are this, we are that. And we're doing wrong things. The arrogance is what caused the issue. And Peter Chico never apologized. And this man is going to clear his name in the courts. And I would sue them after Peter Chico. For the underwear or the panty, whatever they're wearing on them, for coming after you like that. I would sue them. I'd sue them. Because this cannot be right. You know the trauma you have caused to this man? The man is married. The man of his family. You know the trauma? You were talking about your family, your girls and everything, all what they go through. But you took Costco. You had the silver ball in your hand. To say, okay, guys, this is what happened. I took a unilateral decision. Let's try and pay my 3,000. What, what the hell is 3,000 pounds? You ain't broke. You ain't broke. But you, let me tell you something, Ernestile. You have the cliques you have around you. They are going to destroy you. And I shouldn't say they are. They are already destroying you. You, you need to listen to the voice of reason. Everybody that tells you to do this, that, because they want something from you. Listen to the people that don't want anything from you. My people, we have had a lot to chew on tonight. And I must say thank you to all of you for the coffee. Support the movement. Support them because the labors, let me tell you, the labors try everything on me already. It cannot work because I'm covered under the blood of Jesus. Because if I sit here and don't do what my father asked me to do, I would not be happy. Because my country is bleeding. Y'all have to suffer for what y'all did. But at least get up, stand up, fight for what is yours. I will see y'all on Monday. All my lovers on, on YouTube, I love y'all. Thanks for viewing. All my sweet people on Facebook, thanks for viewing. We'll be back on Monday again for us to discuss. After the live, go support the show. Go support. You have nobody in St. Lucia talking like that for y'all. Love y'all. Bye. Have a good night. <laughs> We expose lies and deceive. Expect us 